Hello, this is Professor Robert Hernandez, and I'm going to show you how to uh, stitch using Mystica VR, or Mystica VR. First, I'll launch the program. It is around 30 plus euros uh, a month to have a monthly subscription. And if you've registered, you should be able to get to this point um, and create a new project or what have you. If you haven't registered the account, it will give you an error and it automatically closes. So here, um, I'm going to create a new project if I wanted to. What I have found is I created a new project for every scene that I worked on that had multiple sequences in there. But I would rearrange that and do one project with multiple sequences. So here, I, I'm going to work on the DMZ. Uh, the project itself, again, uh, I will disclose that I didn't read the instructions. I watched some tutorials, and I taught myself how to stitch. And the end results are pretty fantastic. So um, this is that approach. First, uh, you open up a project, create a new one. Again, I would recommend one project for your entire uh, collection of what are called sequences. Uh, you can load a sequence if you want to pick up where you left off. Or here, when it's blank, it's a new sequence. I'm going to stitch together uh, the uh, footage from Samsung 360 Gear, the original. Dropping it off here automatically shows up. Um, and uh, if I were doing the Z camera or the things, you would see the multiple cameras. In fact, let me uh, look. I can remove all cameras or add cameras. But here, just to kind of show you... Um, the Z cam behavior would be like, say, these three cameras, drop it in there, and it's ready to start stitching. Again, I'm going to remove all the cameras and go back with the original Samsung camera that I'm working on. one right here. So once you add the cameras or particularly the footage, what you're going to do is you're going to go to File, uh, no, Scene, Load Presets, or right mouse button click, Load Preset. What that does is you have the latest uh, version of Mystica is it shows you all the different cameras it has templates for. The Garmin, the, uh, the Facebook broadcaster. Freedom 360 Broadcaster, the GoPro Fusion, the Odyssey, the Omni, uh, Izugar lenses, Jaunt is in here, the different Kodaks, the Ozo camera, all of them, the Z cams, Halo, all that stuff is in there. Um, now, I'm working with footage from the Samsung Gear 360 original. I thought that was the round one, um, but I found this template here is the one to select. You put that there, and you can see how nicely it stitches right off the bat. Now, a couple things. Um, there's the icons, and my monitor is a high resolution, so it's sometimes hard to see. Um, but the icons down over here, this is the grid overlay to let you know what the center is, and the button right next to it is where the stitch is. So a couple things that you want to try is once this opens up, you want to go to Positions, Improve Offsets. Sometimes it improves it. Sometimes it actually uh, makes holes in the in the stitch, so you want to take a look at it. So here you can see I'm going to control Z. This is what it was before. So improve offsets, getting better. Then I can also improve angles, getting better too, right? Again, sometimes improving angles puts holes in your scene. Um, one of the cool things here is first it's starting to get together and, and I can add some optical flow to the stitching. But before we do that, see there's a little bit of ghosting here. We can manually adjust that. If you hold down shift and control and then click with your mouse, you can see how the images overlay. You can re-line them up manually. If I hit positions, improve, um, offsets and angles, it'll reset it back to where it was before. So I find that if, if you zoom in on your stitch, you can realign it manually. And it's, it's really, really great. The next thing is you want to recenter 
your image. And there, sadly, with this, uh, there's no way of locking when you move. But if you hold down Control and click, again, it's not locked, so I can go crazy all that stuff. But I've been using the guides to kind of line up right there. So I click on the green line, which was the center, and that's my guide to center this year. See that? So I can, when I first launch a, a new project, I can see in 360 mode where potentially the user is going to start off with, right? So that's that's pretty great. The other thing is to do uh, the angles a bit better. So you want to find something that is 90 degrees, um, and if you hold down Alt and click, you can move left or right to line this up uh, correctly. So here I'm lining these things up. See that top part of it is overlapping with the line a little bit more, so I can readjust it there just enough that I can adjust the horizons. Again, you can uh, hold down Control, and here, for example, I'm holding down Control and clicking. Uh, if I wanted to manually override and make my own version of the horizon. But holding down Alt lets you uh, snap uh, a little bit better. Now, if you recall, we held down Shift Control to adjust the seam over here. I can do the same for the seam over here if I need to. And so kind of line it up as best we can. Now, for some, that might be good enough. Uh, what I've been doing is applying the optical flow. Again, this is my version of stitching without um, reading the manuals. Um, so let's just kind of take a look. Keep an eye on these stitches. Optical flow is on. It's off. On. Off. On. Off. Off right there. Right? So you see it's much, much better. Now let's turn on the stitch line over here. And you can see where, how wide this kind of, the way that I interpret it is like the transition. So I could, right over here, see this? I can click on this and drag my mouse left or right to adjust how wide I want that stitch to be. Um, I also, under optical flow here, can change the range to be none. If you see that, it really jacks up. Small. It's a little bit better medium there's large it often defaults to large sometimes it defaults to medium and you want to play the video and see how it looks sometimes with optical flow usually at the bottom you see a little flickering and things like that so so if you see anything along the tripod there once you uh, zoom out by the way um, it stops playing the video so see this flickering here this is a byproduct of the optical flow. So it's at the bottom. I'm okay with it. But here we are now a bit off screen. So this will be, let me see where we end up. Over here, I'm going to use this as my endpoint. Icon over here does endpoint, automatically puts it all the way to the end. And then I have to determine my out point, or I use the default there. Here's the frames being counted. I'm keeping an eye on this woman in red. I remember that she walks up close. Now, let me show you how great this is. So here she is. She's walking in the stitch. I hit play. She's walking in the stitch line, and you wouldn't even know it. It's so great. Walks by goes behind the camera. Did you see that little kind of ghosting right there? So that's optical flow. And she's done pretty pretty great. Let's we want her to be more in the action, right? So let's get that as our end point, right? To infuse some action into our shot. So here we go, it starts. The viewer is going to be looking here. If they look to the right, they'll see a lady in red coming. She is behind over there, right? So let's see. Oh, cool. We got a bird flying over there. there go. Bird flies by. She's setting up to take a picture. We are hidden right over there. 
If you know where to look, you'll be able to find us. And a nice ender, and I don't remember if I recorded this all the way there, is if she walks out of the frame. Let's see what happens. Let's speed this along a little bit. There she goes, starting to walk out. Walks by the camera. And we can end at any point that we feel appropriate. Sometimes I keep an eye on me, make sure like I'm not approaching the camera. So this is pretty good. This is a good range of time. Someone followed her. She has walked away, right? So now if there is a bit of wind, you can click on stabilize. Make sure priority and follow overheading uh, are, are checked on. They are by default. And you click stabilize and it runs uh, an algorithm, if you will, analyzing all the frames and applies them. It takes about two minutes the first time. But you can adjust how it handles the stabilization. Meaning, it, the way I understand it is that if there's some shakiness in any frame that's under 100 frames, it tries to slow it down and smooth it out a little bit more. You can crank this up, and I've found it uh, working well at 300 frames. So anything that lasts longer than 300 or is less than 300 frames in length, it slows it down and, and stabilizes it. And once you change the number, you know, the default is 100, but once you change the number, all you have to do is reapply stabilize, and you don't have to wait those two minutes. It instantly applies it. So that is to stabilize. I haven't messed with the endpoints yet or color um, because these are uh, gen locked. Um, I don't have to worry about the syncing. There's the output and the input of camera, so I can change the color here, the yaw, the focal point, um, the all that good stuff there. I don't mess with this, the vignetting. This for me, what I've just done, is good enough to have some pretty amazing, amazing stitching with action moving behind there. Once we do that, we go, well, one, let's save the sequence. I'm going to call this Monument. And I'm going to put this in my folder. We're working on uh, the Olympics folder here. Monument. And I'm going to save it. This saves the sequence file in that folder. And now I'm going to render. Let me open this up so you can read it. What I have found is there are different types of uh, rendering files. Um, MP4 movie and the bit rate of high quality. That's given us some really good stuff. There is the ability to have no audio. I believe file is to use an external audio or in movie, which is to use the sound from camera. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to give it the file name. Then I'm going to put it in a directory that I want. And here, this is the same directory that I just set up my folder. Select, make sure. If I'm going to just take this video and inject it, I would do the metadata there. But I'm just going to use this clip and import it into Premiere to do the editing. And then we render. This is actually pretty fast. It's usually less than five minutes. Sometimes it's two minutes. Uh, there it is, two minutes, and it'll render. You view the video in GoPro Viewer. And you'll be able to watch it in 360. You might notice a mistake or something like that. You come back to the program, make some adjustments, re-render, and you're ready to move on to the next stage. This is Robert Hernandez, digital journalism professor at USC Annenberg and creator of journalism, showing you how to stitch with Mystica without reading the manual. Thanks.